losers. Okay, then it was so, BCX yeah. where Simple and Heisen came up into Grand Finals through the losers bracket, and actually they got the reset before ultimately losing. So we've seen Blaze and Agno on sort of both sides of this. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've seen it on both sides. The only difference here is that Simple and Heisen aren't their opponents in Grants this time, right? Simple is, is, is normally the rival to Agno and Blaze in some capacity, depending on what teammate he's with, um, which is lately has been Heisen. But this time around, they took them out really early, very convincingly. It's been uh, it's been a very strong performance and coming out from them. Another thing that's sort of unique about specifically this tournament is because Blaze and Akno and also Heisen and Simple went down into the loser's bracket so early, we haven't really seen that Three, many uh, two, salty runbacks like we would expect, right? Like we regularly see either Blaze and Akno salty runback on Simple Heisen or Heisen Simple salty runback on Blaze and Akno or Akno and Blaze uh, salty runback on Ninja Pavelski or vice versa. But this is the first time today that these teams have fought each other. So, so many like firsts today. This tournament is so unique. And now we're, we're seeing on top of the uniqueness, right, is the adaptation from the Ninja opening up with Zolt in game number one, where he still has that powerful cannon that he loves to main as a weapon, but also getting the axe is popular in twos. Recovery stuff by that ground pad, however, means that a lead's going over to the blue team at the beginning of game number one, and it could be a solid lead if he's able to get Pavelski here too, but no, Pavelski, ground pounds to safety, side aired away again, and this is the scariest point. And yeah, Pavelski, absolutely correct. He is too far away to recover in time. Just fast fall. You don't need that stock anyways. Get back to be able to help your teammate. Don't let him go down a whole nother stock while you try to recover on one that's already lost. Well played by him, even though the lead's in the blue team. Ninja played uh, the time while Pavelski was going over to the left blast zone and respawning. He played it pretty well, but he did take some damage. It wasn't a crazy amount, but it still was some. Pavelski's going to answer with a KO. It's now five stocks to three. But uh, like you said earlier, we're seeing both Ninja and Pavelski go back to kind of what they started the day with. Ninja started with the Zol and then later changed to the Sidra. Pavelski started with the Val and later changed to the Taros. Now, as I'm saying that, Akno might be making him make that switch immediately next game over to the Taros by not only taking him out, but getting three KOs in a row. Still hasn't died. Might go this entire game without dying. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no! Oh, uh -oh. oh, production, don't show this! Don't show how much damage Ninja don't did! Show the, no, it's okay, they're on the replays. They're not going to show the damage. Oh, they saw it for a second. I bet it. someone clipped it. Oh, uh, well. Ooh. Uh, my my uh-oh was a more general. Was a more general uh-oh. As a, like, uh-oh, Acno and Blaze. This is... This is loser's bracket Acno and Blaze. That's right. It's a different team than winner's bracket Acno and Blaze. They're... <laughs> They're just show. They're just clocking in, right? They're here for a paycheck. Uh, my uh -oh okay. was a very targeted uh oh at the 95 damage that the Ninja oh come on, did you had to do it. Game. Look, people are gonna you clip to it. Say I had it. to say it. Uh, well, an unbiased caster would report those numbers caster. because they are fact. Yeah, well, took four, four, four damage. That's a cool number, right? <laughs> Through the same yeah, it's Taza showing his, his real unbiased <laughs> casting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, no. the ninja's going. Oh wait, Pavelski went for the save. Let's see what Blaze is able to do. Akno is going for the downer. It gets the second downer in the web throw. Pavelski's just gone. Ninja fire by the cider, and that's something that Akno and Blaze have been doing a lot in their two v one scenarios, where if their teammate does get hit. By the one in the 2v1, they immediately dash in to punish them at the end of the move they're throwing out. In that case, the ninja was using Neutralite. So Acton went in right afterwards, got a bunch of extra damage. Down sick, just comes right through, cuts the ninja off the top of the stage, loses the stock, but I'd say that's a worthy trade. Not to mention that there's just a bunch of psychological damage from getting hit by a Koji down sick from the sword. Now, after that 2v1 combo they just grabbed, uh, the, well, not, not anymore. <laughs> Blaze and Agno sort of uh, turned that around very quickly, but it was like that Ninja and Pavelski were in the lead. Uh, you could argue either way that either team could be in yeah. the lead now. It's very even between these two Ooh. with how damaged Agno is. And they almost comboed that uh, the anchor into the downstick from Taros. Let's see what Blaze and Agno are able to do. 
Nice falling there. Side light hit. Side Sig off the side light. Gets the stock. Pavelski, no dodge. Means that that's going to certainly be his stock. But Akno missed the falling cider. Could lose the stock in return. And he does. Great turnaround coming out from Pavelski as they even up the game once again. Let's see, though. Pavelski going down. Ninja gets the ground pound, but that's not the stock. And it, Ninja just has to run away from the terror that is Akno and Blaze in a 1v2. You saw the D-Light ground pound. That gave Ninja the chase dodge to get away from the blue team. In came Pavelski, and I think he found three hits immediately. Came out swinging right out of the gate when he respawned. Almost found the follow-up side air. That would have been the KO option on the Blaze. They have to find this KO. They have oh. to find it on Blaze. Nice dare. Gets it. They get the KO, but it was only after Blaze finished side airing the both left and right into Akno for even more damage. Blaze gets the side air, comes back on the stage. Pavelski, nice dodge on the follow up, gets the down stick. Okay, the red team was on the verge of making a comeback, but there goes the ninja, and that could be Pavelski as well as that weapon throw forces the dodge and. <gasps> Okay, Sparky, we got ourselves a game. That was such a great turnaround. Akno, a little cocky there. Pavelski now in a 1v1 against Blaze, which is really difficult, but it's it's doable. We saw Blaze just win a 2v1 situation just a few moments ago. So I still have a lot of yeah. confidence in him. And noticed how I paused to sort of drag that out so I could confirm it once Blaze already <laughs> confirmed the KO. I mean, it was funny because it could have gone way. You're exactly right. As you were saying it, Pavelski landed like six clean hits. So it was like, uh-oh, is he going to sare him? Or, But he did sare him, and that resulted in the victory. And now Blaze and Akno are one game away from making it feel like that the original Grand Finals never even happened. We might just have a Grand Final uh, bracket reset before, like, ten minutes is up. <laughs> At this rate, it's going quite quickly. As we're on to the Great Hall for game number three. So I think Blaze and Agno started out today with a double Bodvar before changing over, maybe a Bodvar Bren before changing over to this uh, Taros Koji pick. Koji not really that popular of a 2v2 character anymore, but yeah, I love Agno's Koji. Just watching yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think Bo in general is not very popular in two. Zapappy being the other Bow player in Europe, at least. Oh no, Pavelski just uh -oh, had. He's right he's there. Done. Oh no! <laughs> He's gone. Look at the coverage that Blair, that Akno had on that oh. corner with Ooh. just that down air. Any other weapon, yeah. he probably couldn't have done that with. Maybe or, but even so. Yeah, bow is a weapon that has an incredible amount of range, but also requires an incredible amount of precision. Um, positioning that down air in while in midair in any other way could have resulted in that not hitting. Pavelski making it back and everything being fine, but Akno has been incredibly accurate, so. He's getting these stocks. And now the blue team is going down the left side there as Blaze gets hit off stage. But Akno is still surviving on this first stock. And last time that he did this, well, it resulted in a five stock in game number one. Nice side air from Pavelski bouncing Akno off the wall. Very much in the red. Oh, D like oh, ground pound no. from Akno. Is that going to be an orange Dead. KO? And a, yep, yes, he is. finished off with another perfect 45 degree angle attack. He didn't have the bow this time, so it was a little bit riskier because he actually had to move himself, no dodge. move his hurt box forward. But it was that unarmed down air basically doing the exact same thing that the dare did before. Side air coming up from the Ninja, trying to finish off Akno's first stock, and Akno somehow manages to turn around into more damage without losing this stock on his own. There's from Pavelski being avoided, then the recovery is enough knockback on its own from above the stage to take Akno off the bottom of it. Blaze now running for his life as Akno covers the side of the stage 1v2, and the Ninja oh. really, really going in. Oh, no, no the ground back. Oh, Pavelski, no! Wait. He survives, and somehow Blaze goes down. All right, red team, bringing the stocks down to even. Oh, Akno, perfect with the side air to punish the anchor. And just rewinding back a little bit to that uh, edge guard situation that happened on the right side, we saw Akno again use the unarmed dare, not necessarily as the KO finish off move, but to get away from that, get under the stage, provide some safety for himself, distance from everything that was going on so he could rotate to the other side of the stage and get back up. Akno putting out a, a series of side six on the bow, trying to catch Pavelski with one of them. Gravity cancel down, let's get back to the stage. Pavelski dips super low, catches Akno off guard, hits the recovery, but Akno continues boxing away with these neutral lights. That neutral came so close, taking the ninja off the top of the stage, but all stocks are technically even. 
It only takes one mishap off the side of the stage to result in the red team having a 1v2 opportunity, but it, only also, it also only takes one axe side air to, to get a bracket reset. Or even that recovery that the Ninja put out with his sword that hit Pavelski, and if he didn't steer it away in time, that would have sent Pavelski flying very high up. Akno and Blaze are just completely running through these teams, giving us the bracket reset. Yes, this has been a very fast round one grand finals. And for those that are unaware, it's been very routine for a lot of these uh, brackets. But when you are in a double elimination bracket and you make it in the grand finals on winner's side without losing a set, if you do lose that first set, it counts as you getting knocked into the lower brackets. Now both teams are sitting here in grand finals, one set loss of peace, and they both have one best of five left to fight to see who is crowned the European 2v2 Spring Champion. Is it going to be Blaze and Akno who are just on a tear, 3 0ing everybody that they ever encounter? Or is it going to be the Ninja 729 and Pavelski with the adjustments going over back to the Jala Taros in game number one of this Three, best of five two, grand finals one, bracket reset? One. We are about to find out. Good start for the red team. Amazing start. Law of Friendly Fire, actually. Maybe not so amazing. Akno was off screen for about five seconds. And Ooh, good start. and the Ninja are getting a good team combo. Akno's gone. That's He's just a fantastic gone. Fantastic start to this game. Oh, and they continue team comboing Blaze. <gasps> I thought that Sizing was going to take him down. Akno trying to get the revenge knockout, but he's ground pounding so low. Do you like ground pound? Chase dodges straight out of there. Oh, Sylight into side air, into another side air. Akno getting his ass beat. He is just going to destroy another ground pound. Oh, the recovery's gone. Ground pound hits. Blaze in the meantime already got it. Akno is taking a plethora of damage. As Pavelski and the Ninja just need to hit like one good axe side air to send Akno down to two stocks in under a minute, but no. Ninja goes down. And that's it. I, I failed to acknowledge that this is the Ninja 729's Jala counterpick where he uses the fire extinguisher to represent a cannon because he technically doesn't have one. That's like, <laughs> every time I see him, that's, he's like, he hasn't told me that's the reason. I'm just assuming that's the reason. It's him like mishmashing the two kind of off weapons from his other two characters, taking the sword from Sidra and taking the axe from the Zulpik, completely ditching yeah. the cannon that he sort of made his name with and really broke out onto the scene with, specifically his cannon, and ditching that for this Jalapik that we saw Fozzie do some great stuff with today. But yeah. now we're seeing the red team start to fall behind with Ninja losing that stock, Pavelski very close to losing this stock. If he's not careful, just a sidelight from Blaze this isn't going to be the KO option just yet. Oh man, a lot of damage coming through, but the blue team is crawling back. Akno lost two stocks really early on, but now he's tacking on a ton of extra damage, and Blaze still has two stocks to the same. They have to take Blaze down and then switch immediately to Akno for a chance, and all right, red team loves that. Neutral Sig Friendly Fire gives him an opportunity for that one v two, but Akno gets stop side aired, and Pavelski goes all the way out there. Oh, it was so close, but Akno makes it back and he gets some damage for it too. Really close game one. Recovery hits. Side air hits. Blaze getting hit by the Nair as Pavelski's covering the ninja's recovery. Oh, and Sidelight Nair comes through, one Nair punish. Side air hits both of them, who's gonna get the hit? I thought Akno was gonna turn around for sure, and he does! He gets the recovery, the ninja goes off the top. It's a 1v2 for Pavelski, and he gets Nair out of his weapon, dodges the down oh. just barely, and that is it! Akno and Blaze take game number one of the bracket reset, one of the closest games we've seen between these two teams so far. I can't believe he went for a ground pound there. I was expecting a recovery. Maybe it was... Maybe it was a miss input, like he went to fast fall down. I've definitely, I've definitely done there? ground pounds while trying to recover. Yeah, that's possible. Because man, going for a ground pound when you're that high up and your opponent is like right there next to you, I think a recovery would have been the better option. Maybe he didn't have it, but I'm pretty sure he did. I can't wait for them to break that down on the Monday Esports Dev Stream, <laughs> starting at 5 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv forward slash brawlhalla. Here we go, game two, great haul. 1-0 lead for Akno and Blaze. Game number one started off beautifully for Pavelski and the Ninja. Oh, oh and it looks like huge. it's starting to do it again. 
Akno has been losing these first few stocks like in a really quick fashion and then tightening up right afterwards. Um, gets hit by that Taros down tick, doesn't get taken off the top. Blaze avoiding the recovery from Pavelski narrowly, and the down tick doesn't punish the neutral light from Akno. As no team has lost a stock just yet, Pavelski accidentally gets a friendly fire, but somehow uses it to his oh. advantage. That was a really strangely charged uh, down heavy. We've seen Pavelski go for the down heavy off of what the ninja was doing today. Ah, but he that's quite that's the timing on it. I was like, why are you charging that? But I'm assuming it was because <laughs> Jala had something ready to go. First stocks are in favor of neither team. It's actually super close. Let's we'll see who goes down first as they are take home, oh, man. They brought they brought the ninja down into work already. D-Light recovery will take place off the top to stock lead. Team combo on to Akno. D-Light down air. Oh, oh no, he doesn't get the down air. That's huge for Akno. I was so used to seeing that combo play out, I wasn't ready for it to not happen. Yeah, that's a uh, major drop that could have given the red team something huge to put them in the lead here. Now it's just even. Yeah, which is still a lot. I mean, it means true. something for the red team, considering that they've lost the last four games. Oh, Pavelski charged that one. Nice down. So didn't get the alley-oop. I think he landed before the side air could have been buffered in. But Akno goes down regardless. So now they're switching over to Blaze. Side air doesn't hit. Not enough drift back on the axe once the move begins casting. But no. The ninja comes down with that fastball side air. And no. Doesn't get the recovery either. But it's still great damage for the red team. This could be the first win against this team so far. But Blaze sliding in with the down sig. And Akno with the side sig takes out a stock apiece. And now it's 3-1. to one. And it went from being even to being in the red team's favor to now being in the blue team's favor after that. It was quick back-to-back -back KOs. They do get the KO on a blaze, so we're back to even on our final stocks. This is sort of the most interesting game between these two teams so far. The fact that it's this yep. even on the final stocks. Disa coming up from Pavelski completely misses. Blue team further, far enough away from it, that is. Sidesig hits, and that's the full brunt of a tarot sidesig onto Akno's Koji. Downlight hits as well, now deeper into the orange. One more solid axe that will put him into red, but Akno still fighting back. One recovery hits, another recovery whiffs. Pavelski putting up those low, fully charged down sigs in the air. Can't quite get him to connect, but he's not getting too much punish. And the side air clash with the side sig from Akno, and Akno gets another fully charged side sig. He's just side sig left and right. He doesn't know where the light oh, attack button is. Oh, Akno! Oh. Pavelski wasn't able to turn around and find anything off of that. Everybody in the red, but a D-Light recovery comes out, boosted up, giving a little bit of help from that right soft platform. That is going to be a KO off the top. Akno putting out 575 damage the most by far out of anybody in the game. Also grabbing the most KOs out of anybody in the game. And this is uh, looking a little bit rough, not even just a little bit, a lot of bit rough for Pavelski and the Ninja as they're already staring down two shots fired from the triple barrel shotgun that Blaze and Akno have pointed at them. I mean, heck, they, they even got a, a respawn, right? They got a free, they got an extra life, right? By being in the grand finals and they're already in the same position again. Uh, Blaze and Akno are proving why they have those ones next to their name when it comes to power rankings, right? And, and if there was a ever a case to make for the statement of them believing that they are the best twos team globally. It is the way that they are dismantling the European 2v2 scene in today's tournament. I mean, Blue and M for many, they took them down in the winner side of the bracket, but the way that Blaze and Akno are playing now through Lovers all the way in the Grands is un, uh, it's unprecedented. They're, they're playing so well with this Koji and Taro, so now they're going into game number three on the Great Hall once again. Can the Ninja 729 and Pavelski with the double four bring out a miracle and bring it to game number four. Because even though they are down five games, they only have to win three to win the entire tournament. That's the benefit of doing as well as they did earlier on in the bracket. Let's see what happens here as Pavelski's fight against Akno on the right side of the stage. <laughs> three games is so many games. <laughs> it's a lot. It's so it's funny to say, well, you only have to win three in the grand hey, they, they've already played. <laughs> they've already played five, okay? <laughs> it's like, three uh, how bad so can three be? against this team, dude. It's crazy. Oh, the down six snipes of it. Oh, Pavelski goes out of the double KO and Akno and Blaze. Blaze just throws his hammer at Akno. Being like, what are you doing standing up there? Oh, that was such a cool team combo. <gasps> oh, I thought he was dead. I thought he was in a white. I thought the delay recovery was going to do it. That was so scary. Actor goes down. Very lucky for the ninja to not lose his stock in that moment.
Side light side air from the orb onto Blaze. Gonna swap back to the double hammer. Blaze is definitely very red, and the down air is going to KO him off the top. Akno trying to put as much pressure as he can. That down air, we've seen him He's use it so, so good well. The is one of them going oh, to fall? Yeah, yeah, with the recovery of the stage. Is Pavelski dead? Oh. What's going on over on the left side? We talked about how people are ready to fight on the right <laughs> side. Maybe this team is he just left handed. Ah, Pavelski makes it back. Akno goes down. Wait. How did the ninja go down at the same time? I wasn't even looking. Oh, okay. Whatever. Get even game. There was too much going on, dude. My ADD brain could not handle it. All right. I would say damage-wise, it is. It, it, there's no clear. There's no clear favor here. Let's just see who's fighting off stage and make a call. That then. was crazy. Avoids the sideline. I was overstimulated on the left. I thought I was watching an Overwatch League game. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know what the heck was going on. Brahala has become a spectator unfriendly sport at this <laughs> point. That was, that was, that was wild. Uh, oh, Pavelski falling with the downer. What? Huh? I don't, I don't know what happened there either. How did, did Blaze like do a triangle formation with his knockback? What? I, the orb down. Okay. Red team has a lead. That's the only thing that we have to care about. That we're, we're casters here. Let's talk about who's winning. Who is winning? <laughs> the Ninja and Pavelski. The what? Ninja's okay. Why did you have right. to ask that sure. with the question mark? Well, I had to ask because I was like, I know, and then I didn't know. That's why I have you, Sparky. <laughs> Man, this Grand Finals, this, uh, this is something else here with this double Thor from the Ninja and Pavelski against Akno's I mean, it might work. Koji. He's going to take that Akno. It's, it's so back to close. even. Ah, oh man, Pavelski's taking so much damage. Blaze has just put on a ton of damage. Stop Cider, it's not gonna be enough for Blaze. Recovery, double recovery. <gasps> oh, no, God, that's no huge. Comes out the same. Ah, but Pavelski makes it back, but the recovery stops the ground pound, and now Pavelski's looking for a weapon, and for some reason, the Ninja 17 is using the neutral sink fully charged. Cider, Cider hits oh, Pavelski. Bounces off the stage, oh. it wasn't the KO option. Blaze in the 1v2, we've seen him do it before, we've seen him do it today even. GC Asic ah, fades sink. away, doesn't get hit, oh. finds the double KO, and that is a back-to-back -back 3 0 Blaze and Akno yet again, to nobody's surprise, EU 2v2 Spring Champions. I gotta admit, even.